SMT Nation, we back. Nation, these news stories keep circulating about T-Mobile's low band spectrum that they were supposed to sell to Dish, which Dish couldn't afford to pay, uh, continues to be an issue. I think we have to kind of put a bow on this, uh, you know, just to clear up any confusion or misconceptions around this situation. Let's talk about it here in today's video. The article from Alan Friedman at Phone Arena will be linked in the description. Ways to support us can be found in the description as well. Please do like and share this video. That's how our channel gets found and that's how people find our channel. Thanks in advance for doing that. Ways to support us can be found in the description. Uh, there's, um, there's a lot to discuss here. Let me just jump right in. So uh, with respect to the T-Mobile 800 megahertz spectrum, they're not really allowed to keep this. The intention from the get-go was regulators, you know, DOJ, FCC, in the whole T-Mobile spec merger, is they are trying to find a way to enable T-Mobile to be a stronger player, to compete against Verizon and AT&T, but then also retain a fourth competitor after Sprint exits stage left. So the, in, in the whole concept of this, you know, the 800 megahertz low band, it was band 26 at the time when Sprint was using it. T-Mobile was told that they had to divest this and sell it to Dish. At least Dish had priority, the ability to buy it first. Their capital situation is very, very bleak. They couldn't pay for it. They even paid for an extension and still couldn't meet that time frame, decided not to purchase it anyway. So now the destiny of this 800 megahertz frequency um, which N26, band 26, whatever, uh, a good low band, right? So it's got good reach, travels far, propagation, all those things. Compare it to like, you know, your band five for, for the other guys, uh, you know, your band 71 for the other guys, that sort of thing. Um, really the, the, I think the end game is for this stuff to end up with utility companies. That seems to be the most likely scenario. They, this article from Alan will give you the impression that Verizon and AT&T are a slam dunk to buy it. I don't think that's the case. At least I don't think it's a slam dunk. Is it possible that they could buy it? Sure. But that would need a pre approval from regulators because they are trying to keep it away from Verizon and AT&T. Um, I could tell you right now, I, I want it. I definitely do not want it with AT&T. <laughs> that would be the worst outcome. You could make an argument that Verizon could use it. Um, I guess um, some people say they need more low band on air. Maybe, maybe that makes it a more meaningful, you know, connection for customers, I suppose. But low band has its place, you know, and, and I think with utilities, it makes a lot of sense because if you do a little bit of research on this, you'll see that the utility companies are busy buying low band spectrum licenses, right? So 900 megahertz and 600 megahertz they've been interested in these frequencies and it's not even a lot of bandwidth we're talking about frequencies that that you know might bring them six megahertz of bandwidth but again they don't really need a lot of bandwidth they just need the reach right so you've got a and and some of the companies and the holdings companies that have been selling to utilities have profited and made good money uh as far as t-mobile goes they're probably not going to deploy this right they don't want to keep it they want the cash uh, they've got acquisitions and mergers that they're up to. You know, they got to pay for fiber. Uh, their their legal team is always busy, so they got to get paid. Um, so, look, I know financial analysts are saying AT&T and Verizon are the most likely buyers of this spectrum, but that would need approval from regulators. Not to say that they wouldn't approve it, just saying that that adds more complications and steps. Utility companies at an auction would be a slam dunk and very easy. The thing is, is these same utility companies are playing the field and looking at other options too. They're looking at 900. They're looking at other low band frequencies. Regardless, I wanted to make this video so you guys understand the current status of this, this bandwidth from T-Mobile and Dish and all that. Uh, I want you guys to understand kind of like the current situation, what the most likely outcomes are, and you know... To make sure that we understand, like, you know, props to the people who write these articles, you know, but it has to be said that it ending up with 
Verizon and AT&T adds regulatory steps to it, which I think decreases the likelihood of it occurring. But I will also throw in that regulators really haven't been regulating much of anything lately. Uh, so maybe, maybe that is a legitimate chance of that happening. What do you guys think is the outcome for the 800 megahertz from T-Mobile? Do you guys think that it goes to auction and gets sold to utilities? Do you guys think it ends up with one or the other AT&T or Verizon? What do you want to see happen? Sound off in the comment section below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.